This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Investigate and modify. Run the program. Oh, I can do that. Let's see what we have here. Mm -hmm. Printing the original array. Oh, okay. And so we have a 2D array here. Row 1, row 2, row 3, or row at index 0, row at index 1, row at index 2. And we're printing it out by row. And then it looks like 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 10. 50, 60. Oh, okay. Then we're printing the middle first. Okay, interesting. Look at the shift array method. Alrighty. Shift array. There we are. What is the purpose of line 15? Uh, it looks like line 15 here is saving whatever value is in that row. So we start at row zero and at index zero. So it would be saving then this number on the first row and then going through the uh, row this number second that number third and i would point out that yep it looks like these are the ones that get flipped or pushed back right so 10 is now at the end 40 is now at the end right here right here interesting so what uh what happens if i change it to another value let's give it a shot let's do index one uh okay Now, obviously, if you threw in like index five, that wouldn't work because there's only zero, one, and two here. Okay, so I did index one, which would be 20. Oh, look, now it says 20 twice. So we got rid of that first value. We no longer have it. What is the purpose of the line? Uh, let me undo this back to zero. What is the purpose of the line number, row, call? Okay. So right now we're looping through the columns. We're going to start at the first column. Interesting. So we grab the value of column zero, but we don't loop through that. We loop through starting at column one or index one. So we would start on this row at 20 and then we get the length of this, which would be three. And then we're going to go up by one each time. Numbers row, row right now would be zero, column minus one. Interesting. So since we already are certain that we are starting at column one, we can do minus one because index zero exists. And so if we're starting at column one, we're starting technically at 20. However, we're saying, okay, minus col one column, same row. So now we're saying this column, we're gonna give it a new value. What is the new value of that column? Oh, well, it's new value equals to the value of the current column that we are on. So we're on this column. We say, hey, minus one, look back one and now this spot is going to be equal to this value so if i broke right here if i just did a return for instance uh, let's see if it lets me yeah notice that 20 has been moved over and that's it okay and so then we do it again and we move 30 over and then in our final step we say number row number zero dot length so our first row, we're just getting the length again. Subtract one from the row. So one from the length, and that would be the final index in that row. And we set it equal to temp. What was temp? The first value of an array. Interesting. Uh, what happens if you changed from column one to negative two? This is going to give us an error because we're starting here. Did it ask us to change that? No. So now we're going, if we start at column one, and now we subtract two. Well, that would be an index of negative zero. Negative zero doesn't exist. What is the purpose of equals temp? This replaces the last value with the value that we saved, the first value. Uh, like, what happens if you change to a different value, like zero or one? Okay, let's do one here. What this will do is just replace the first and the zero and in the index one with our save value. So that should be. Oh, wait a minute. Numbers.length, this shouldn't do anything. That's just the length of our array. So row zero is the same length. What if I do this, though? Minus zero. And that's going to mess it up. What happens if we just change this? Let me hard code this to one. And now notice where 10, 40, and 70 end up. Interesting. So cool. And the reason these stay the same is because we just saved over. Keep in mind, this row does move over, right? So if I did this, I want to just point this out because I was confused for a second, to be honest. It's like, wait a minute, how do we still have this row? Let me hit return to show you what I'm going to say here. 
So what I'm saying here is notice that 30 is still over here, but if this is our last step, we just save over that value. So anyways, let me put it back to how it was. If I can get there and cool. How would you shift the opposite direction? Experiment with the code and try to shift the elements to the right instead of the left. Ooh, okay, so instead they want us to, and right now we're shifting over this way, 20, 30. And so instead they want us to grab 30, I would assume. So to do this the opposite, let's see if I can get this. All right, to do it the opposite, we just need to start at column uh, zero here, we're going to need to save the last value. Um, now we know the length of all these arrays. So I could just say zero or two, I could also do length minus one, uh, which could be advisable, but I'll just say two since I know that's what I need. And now instead of here, I'm going to add one to the column. So I'm going to start at zero and add one to the column. However, and by the way, guys, I, I understand why they do zero. They're all the same length. I like putting row here. Uh, just in case for there was something weird like a jagged array. This just gets the length of the current row. Yes, all the rows are the same length right now. Um, now, here I need to be careful, though, because I need to subtract one. If I don't subtract one, since I'm going up one by the column in my loop, I'll hit an error because I'll go past the end of the array, which is problematic. So I want to make sure to subtract one uh, up here in the condition of the for loop. And now... Oh, I want to start at zero. No, that's correct. Subtract one, call plus plus. And then instead of doing this length, we're going to want to replace the first value, which should be zero. Let's see what I broke. Oh, uh, well, nothing. This is looking good. This is what's expected. We're moving that first value. We're moving these over. Now, notice I lose my 20. And the reason I lose my 20 is I shift 10 over, hit the bottom of this, go back around, and I say, all right, so get the current value. Well, now 10's right here, and change the value 1 up. So now 30 becomes 10 again. So we need to retain those values. And this can get better get tricky. My easiest way, or what I think is the easiest and most straightforward, most readable, I'm going to create a new variable called current, the current value. And then I'm going to change temp just because I want it more descriptive. I want it to be actually called, oh no, <laughs> I'll leave temp. We'll make use of that. But I'm also going to do, so I guess maybe I should. So here's what I'm adding, int cur, and then I'm going to do int next. Next is going to be equal to the value that we want to use. Well, next, I'll show you what I mean. Um, I'll just do row and then zero for now. Okay, maybe I shouldn't hard code zero. No, I will. Okay, so now that's all good. We have cur, we have next. What I need to do at the top of this, though, is make cur equal to the next. And then, because I want to make sure I save my current value, that number 20, I need to save it. So now I'm going to have next be equal to this, right? So I'm about to replace the value one column ahead. I'm about to get rid of that value, but I need it the next time around. So I need a way to save it within our loop. The reason I have cur here is because I also need to have that before I save next, I need to be setting it up. <laughs> Could I do this without this? Yeah. Nope because I'm about to save over it. It's tempting to try to do it with one variable, but I'm about to save over this. Right? So I need to make sure that I grab that value here immediately. But since I'm going to save over my next value, which I need to use here, I have cur. And then this should be zero. That looks good. Let's see if I broke something. I did. Internet was numbers. 20. Yep. Cool. Hey, that's a tricky one. Fun. All right. Onward.